For the first time, a brain in a dish is playing a video game at an Australian lab. Yes, you heard that right. Australian neuroscientists discovered that it's possible to teach brain cells living in a dish how to play the classic computer video game Pong. Live biological neurons show more about how a brain works than AI ever will. These findings could help scientists to understand the brain better. It's another leap in the field of artificial intelligence, so let's dive straight into it. First of all, growing cells in a lab. Cortical labs in Australia conducted studies to see if nerve cells in a dish could be used to control a basic video game. It sounds crazy, doesn't it? For years, cells from people and other animals have been used in research. In labs, these living cells are grown in little dishes. Special cells, called neurons, make up most of the brain. Neurons communicate with one another in the brain using short electrical messages and interact with the rest of the body. When scientists shift nerve cells in a dish, they naturally connect. To their surprise, the neurons started performing dramatically better. This signaled the start of something incredible. The researchers created nerve cells over a tiny electronic chip to communicate with the neurons in the dish. Multiple electrodes on the chip enable electrical impulses to be sent to or read from the cells. The project was named Dish Brain by scientists. Next up, what's the recipe? Let's look at how many nerve cells were required to play a video game. The researchers took roughly 800,000 nerve cells in total. It might sound like a lot to you, but it's fewer neurons than a cockroach has. Kagan and his colleagues generated human neurons from adult stem cells and used mouse cells from embryonic brains to carry out their experiment. The study found that even small clusters of neurons have a remarkable capacity for structure and fast learning, even under unique circumstances. Dish Brain quickly picked up on how to play Pong, much to everyone's surprise. The computer sent messages to the brain cells, showing the location of the bouncing ball so that they could play the game. It started observing electrical impulses that were information flowing from the cells simultaneously. The Melbourne-led team's dish brain study results were published in the Neuron Journal. This says that computer-linked cells eventually learned to sense the position of the game's electronic ball and control a virtual paddle. Following that, we have the experiment. Kagan, the chief scientific officer of Melbourne-based Cortical Labs, sought to investigate whether it was possible possible to use the innate intelligence of neurons. To carry out their experiment, they grew nerve cells on top of microelectrode arrays, which could measure their activity and activate them. A cluster of approximately 800,000 neurons, about the size of a bumblebee's brain, was used in the studies. The game involved a simple form of Pong without an opponent. A signal was delivered from the left or right of the array to show where the ball was situated, and Dish Brain, as the researchers called it, fired back signals to move the paddle. I used to stare at it and mutter. I swear it's getting better. After some analysis, we found out that it was, explains Kagan. Now, let's continue to see how it works. When the dish brain struck the ball with a paddle, an attractive pattern of the electrical activity happened. But these turned into chaotic electrical signals by the time the ball left the screen. The neurons receive a small electrical reward each time the paddle contacts the ball and get better at playing with time. Not much, but enough to show that something is occurring. Coming up, how do they entice the nerve cells to learn? The researchers couldn't feed it like they could a dog or a monkey. The researchers decided to test the hypothesis that neurons seek to foresee what's happening around them. Giving dish brains something predictable would be the reward. And guess what? Even the cells on the dish adore the reward. Now, every time dish brain hits the ball with the paddle, it receives a lovely pattern of electrical activity. On the other hand, it received chaotic electrical impulses with no pattern when the ball flew off the screen. It may surprise you, but Dish Brain has learned to play Pong. It was able to hold the ball on the screen for longer. The Cortical Labs team believes the experiment can teach scientists a lot. Artificial intelligence is currently receiving a lot of attention. Many AI programs are built on scientists' assumptions about how the brain works, which may or may not be correct. The research could also develop special computers with certain life parts, like neurons. Researchers believe such a computer could learn faster and adapt to new settings more quickly. Next, why do they start the dish brain 
brains with Pong? You might wonder why they chose the game Pong, because it's a game with basic rules and great for artificial intelligence training. And as Kagan points out, it was one of the first video games ever coded. This a tribute to the team's geek interests, which run throughout the project. The brain cells could identify which side of the Pong ball was on and then operate as a virtual paddle in the game. The experiment showed that brain cells could display intelligence when kept in a laboratory dish. The second task that Dish Brain attempted was the dinosaur game that appears in Google Chrome when no internet connection is found, and Kagan said the initial results were impressive. But not only that, researchers think of the Dish Brain as sentient, which they describe as being able to receive and respond to sensory input dynamically. But they stopped labeling it conscious, which implies being aware of one's existence. Let's get into the steps to assess the free energy principles. The study also supports Professor Friston's free energy concept. The researchers found a hurdle when figuring out how to direct the cells to follow a specific course. They must go deeper into what Professor Friston works with because they don't have direct access to dopamine systems or anything else that could deliver real-time incentives. Information entropy is a basic knowledge about how a system could self-organize to interact physically with its environment. Following the free energy principle, cells should try to reduce environmental uncertainty at this stage. This is remarkable because, unlike a pet, these mini brains cannot be taught this kind of self-organization. In the short term, it offers a new approach to assessing the impact of medications or poisons in a dish and how it might affect information processing. In the long term, this might be the starting point for a new intelligent technology that combines the best biological intelligence with machine learning. This unique ability to enable cell cultures to do a task in which they show sentience by directing the paddle to return the ball by sensing opens up discovery possibilities with far-reaching benefits for technology, health, and society. Last, we have the future it holds for us. As a result of this amazing discovery, we're all a little curious about what the future holds for us. This could pave the way for entirely new approaches to comprehending what is happening in the brain. The unexpected discovery that Dish Brain did not act like silicon-based systems was exciting. Dr. Kagan hopes the techniques will be used to test cures for neurological conditions like Alzheimer's. While Dr. Kagan's team is working with bioethicists to ensure that they don't unknowingly develop a conscious brain, with all the ethical problems that would raise, the mini brains are likely to become increasingly complicated as the research advances. Artificial intelligence researchers have previously developed devices that can defeat grandmasters at chess. Researchers must compare this new technology to the early days of the computer field when the initial transistors were basic prototypes that weren't very reliable. But after years of dedicated study, they produced immense technological marvels worldwide. For instance, the learning rate of the cells is observed to improve over time, as does the neuron's ability to modify and adjust their activity as a result of experience. The researcher is thrilled with the findings and claims this is a new area. Not every day you wake up and create a new field of science. The research has sparked a controversy between those who oppose the emergence of consciousness and those who believe that complex organoids can be used to explore severe human diseases. Under three-dimensional culture conditions, brain organoids are produced from induced pluripotent stem cells and embryonic stem cells. In the opinion of Miotri and many other neuroscientists, human brain organoids may hold the key to comprehending human-specific disorders like autism and schizophrenia, which are not accessible to detailed research in mice models. Miotri claims that to accomplish this, he and others may have to construct consciousness purposefully for the humane use of brain organoids and other experiments that might attain consciousness, researchers now advocating for a set of rules similar to those used in animal research. That's a wrap for this video. Amazingly, the mini brain learns without instruction and is more flexible and adaptive. What do you think about these new self-learning mini brains? What else can they do? Let us know in the comments below, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you at the next one.